All right. Hey. All right. So let's uh, pretend I'm on 2x speed, but I'll try to be clear and I'll just skip things that aren't really that uh, critical and I won't get into detail at this moment because of time. So overview is just uh, going to go over some of Flux2 awesomeness for, specifically for Helm users. Um, going to uh, just, just briefly at, at this point mention when to migrate and perhaps when you might not want to migrate. Okay. And, uh, and then I was going to do a demo of the Helm operator to the controller migration uh, from v Flux v1 Helm operator to the Flux v2 Helm controller. Um, and I have that migration all set up and I'm happy to do it if we have time at the end. So I'll just check in then. Uh, okay, so Flux2 awesomeness for Helm users. Uh, one is uh, the, pri the primary thing, which I think <laughs> our technical difficulties illustrated is, um, is that uh, reconciliation is super important, right? I know you've probably heard that about a billion times so far um, in GitOps days, but uh, now with the, um, with the Helm controller, you can pause and resume that reconciliation per release. That's, that is pretty important. Um, Flux one, when you were, if you, if you needed to do this with, um, with the operator, you had to pause the entire operator. You had to scale it down to zero in order to pause reconciliation or rather just, just simply pause the entire thing and it paused all releases. Uh, now you can um, have a more fine grained, um, flexible way of, of doing that. And this is important for, um, it's valuable in non-production environments um, so that you can debug, but it's also valuable in production in case you need to do specific and manual things. For example, some teams you know, don't have all of their, uh, I know this never happens to anyone in this audience, but don't have every application in uh, fu fully, uh, fully stable microservices and everything's running smoothly. Sometimes there's legacy code, sometimes there are manual gates, sometimes there are things you, you have to do. And this is really important and valuable for those purposes. Uh, so uh, the controller also has a, um, a depends on feature, which is, very, which is very nice. This is essentially if you, um, I'm gonna skip to the example first about if, if, uh, if you have say workloads that have ingress and you rely on an ingress controller, well, you might want that installed first. Um, if you are using annotations for cert manager, for example, for TLS, same deal. You may wanna ensure that that's installed first. So depends on is really valuable here. The other nice feature of depends on is that it's, it's more memory efficient than a, a way of doing it that many people may have done in the past, which is to make one gigantic umbrella chart um, that installs all of your dependencies. Uh, Helm is, uh, does a lot of things, stores a lot in memory when you, when you have an umbrella chart. Um, and all of its dependencies. So, so depends on really um, helps uh, keep that a lot lighter. Another nice feature of, uh, and I'm just kind of going over some highlights here, uh, but another nice feature of the controller is that you can use Simber ranges. Uh, so you can see the examples here. Um, my understanding is that that was, that was a feature that was added in the controller. Um, I have a link to the docs. So when you look at this amazing slideshow later, uh, you can you can actually read up on the details of of when that was introduced and what you can do with with Simber ranges. This is nice um, if you if you really want to keep up to date with say um, just the two x version and you don't really want to pin a specific version below that. Um, you can also you know keep to a minor version. Really anything that normal Simber ranges allows you to do um, with with Helm you can do now with the controller. Uh, this was this was a, a nice feature. Uh, some people some people may not need this. Uh, many may not, but but some do. Um, so you can install uh, from S3, Google Storage, Azure, really any any bucket. Um, uh, for those of you who can't see the GIF, the KFC note is uh, just a joke about this meme. But basically, any uh, uh, well, not any, but let's just say uh, currently supported. Um, uh, storage buckets are, can be a source. Um, so the source controller allows that and you can pop your charts in there and install from there. Um, another really nice feature is that if you want to add more, an additional Helm repository, you don't have to restart your uh, daemon to do that. Your daemon that's supposed to do your reconciling 
can stay running. Um, so uh, now with Flux 2, uh, the controller, you because we use references, um, you act, we actually separated out um, Helm repos from Helm releases. Uh, those are separate CRDs. Um, now those, those custom resources are now referenced um, and it, it really is what you would want to expect, I think, at this point from a, 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 a developer experience. Um, it allows greater isolation ultimately, um, just, like, just like the last, uh, the last feature. So uh, this essentially allows you to reuse, reuse repos um, and reference them. You don't have to define them over and over again for each release. You can define one repo and, and recycle that, reuse that ultimately. Um, it's because it's pointed to by name now rather than the rest of the meta metadata stored with the uh, release. And a cool feature that I think Lee covered pretty in depth in his, uh, in his demo is that you can now have an out of cluster experience. Uh, you can use a, a flux, uh, excuse me, a management cluster to now control other clusters. Um, flux uses Cappy under the hood for that. And um, it allows you to essentially do fleet management um, or any other kind of pattern that, that um, you know, you can actually get creative with it and, and, uh, and use this for different things, um, perhaps use cases that we haven't envisioned yet, but it does in fact work and it works well. So uh, I'm now to the point where I was normal. I was going to do a demo of the Helm operator, but um, just in preparation for this, I have thrown, uh, I have a gist up, which I can, which I've linked to as well. Um, and I can just, do you think it's better for me to just show the, 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 uh, the images of what this does rather than showing the demo? What, do I have time to demo? Okay. Then in that case, uh, why don't I, uh, why don't I now escape from, uh, from the slideshow and um, and go ahead and go ahead and uh, open up my gist. So I'm just going to show you all how this works. Uh, it should be relatively fast. I'm creating a kind cluster. Could I uh, zoom in on the the gist? Is this a little more readable? Okay. So basically, I'm just creating a local cluster. It'll take you know a few more seconds. Um, I'm going to install a bare bones Flux two um, installation that doesn't have all the things you would normally uh, install with with Flux two using using the new Flux CLI. Um, I'm just installing only what we need: the Helm source controller. Sorry, the source controller and the Helm controller. Um, so that that'll just keep this demo shorter. Oh, <laughs> actually, you're supposed to be seeing my terminal. Give me one second. Sorry about that. Uh, yes. So can you can you see my terminal now? OK. Um, just believe me that I actually literally created a client cluster, and I literally uh, also install just installed. Uh, uh, so that took thirty seconds, and I just literally installed the um, only the components that I need for for uh, this demo for, with Flux, uh, and that took two seconds. So now I'm 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 just really going to be copying and pasting from that gist, and and, uh, and I'll describe what I have in text. So so now I'm going to install the operator. Um, this is going to be fairly fun. I'm just going to simply apply these, um, these, these, uh, the CRDs, the RBAC, and the deployment YAML. This is really, this is from the Flux docs. The one thing that we had to update, I don't know if the Flux docs have been updated yet for, for Flux 1 rather, is, uh, is this patching needed to change a little bit. Um, and that should be there properly now. Um, I'm now going to install the Flux 1 operator. Um, uh, uh, custom resource, uh, the, sorry, the Helm release custom resource. So I'm going to, you'll be able to see this in my terminal, but I'm basically taking this, uh, this demo example, and uh, this is the, the fluxcd.io v1 custom resource for Helm release. So, so people in the audience that are familiar with this, 
um, this is how you did it, right? I'm using Stefan's uh, wonderful pod info uh, release. So now if I, if I um, do a uh, Kubernetes get, um, get that resource, I should actually see the operator custom resources there. Um, I should be able to do a Helm LS to also see that, that it did in fact uh, install the Helm release. Yay, for Flux1. Um, OK, so now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale down the Helm operator, because that's what you would normally do. It, and that's how you do it. You set it to you know, just zero replicas, because you don't want this reconciling while uh, the, the controller is also trying to reconcile. Um, they might not like that very much together. So what I'm going to do is, um, because I've already installed um, the Flux, the Flux uh, 2 components um, that we need, I'm going to now apply the, um, the, a, a, a version of the custom resource for Helm 2, the same version of that custom resource for Helm 2. Um, or I'm sorry, rather, I'm going to do this in two steps because I'm going to install the Helm repository that I mentioned. We, we split out for better reusability. Um, and I can actually, I can actually show, I can actually do a describe on that repository um, to show that uh, that it fetched the index, which it did. And now I'm going to, um, I'm going to apply the version two of the controller, the sorry, the version two controller um, custom resource for that same Helm release. And so this is how it how it maps. Um, we can you can check out the details of the demo later, but there are um, there are reasons why there are uh, there are ways to map it, and it's all in the docs. Okay, so I'm going to apply that. Um, by the way, just to be clear, this mapping is something from v1 to v2 you have to do manually. Uh, there's nothing we we can't really do that for you with the tools. It uh, it, it it could be possible if something like a, a Helm two to three plugin, but um, there are so many different use cases, so many different ways that that these were um, that these were used. That it, it really isn't worth the time now, especially now that uh, Flux One is is uh, is in deprecation mode. And, um, so in any case, uh, in future though, for version two, I just want to clarify to the audio, to, to everyone wondering if they're going to have to do this over and over. The answer is no. We're going to have conversion hooks for new CRD versions of Flux Two, so you don't have to worry about that for the future. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get. I'm going to go ahead and see that now. I was looking. Remember at the uh, at the um, at the V1 uh, resource. Now I'm looking at the V2 resource just to make sure that that actually populated correctly, and it it did. It looks like reconciliation succeeded. Wait a sec. What does that mean? I'm going to do a Helm LS, and now I can see that there are two versions um, because now the controller has reconciled and created a new Helm version. It's exactly the same, but Helm now knows that, that this, is, this is reconciled and that, and that actually worked. So um, I'm going to do Helm LS just to prove that that's, oops, excuse me, I just did that. Uh, I'm now going to, um, uh, let's see, I'm now going to show what reconciling is like. Um, uh, let's say I want to d go ahead and uninstall the, this, uh, this release. Okay, and you can see you can see that um, that it is in fact. Oops, excuse me. <laughs> Hell, MLS. You can see that it is in fact no longer there. But if I now do use the flux reconcile command, um, if, if if I had just waited ten minutes, it would come back because I specified this. Um, or sorry, I specified the interval for five minutes. We could wait five minutes, but let's not do that. Let's go ahead and just trigger this manually by doing a flux reconcile. This is another thing that, op that a human operators have at their disposal, uh, uh, in addition to, to, uh, to web hooks. Um, OK, great. So now that's there. Now let's do a Helm LS again. Whoa. Can I zoom in on the terminal? Yes. Can you see that? OK, great. So I do a Helm LS again. and. Voila, um, the, uh, <laughs> the release is there. And so now what I'm going to do is let's just assume that we moved through, uh, users have finished upgrading all of their V1 um, Helm releases. 
the operating home releases. And we're all finished with that. Now I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and, and um, uh, well, let's say I won't assume that. I won't actually assume that. Um, we've just finished with this one release. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and remove the V1 uh, custom resource for that specific uh, release definition. So um, once users are finished with all of the, um, uh, with all of their releases migrating, then they can really, then they can go ahead and delete, uh, remove the operator from the cluster and, um, and then you'll be all cleaned up. Um, I'm going to clean up this demo just by deleting the kind cluster and I'm now finished. So uh, that was, that was um, that. And um, great. So I think we're now at, okay, just when to migrate. So uh, we think new users should go right to Flux 2 uh, for the most part. Um, nearly everyone will want to do that. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's better architected generally. I mean, that's why, that's why it's a version two. Um, it's got a lot of new features, some of the high, some, some highlights of which I've covered earlier. Um, but uh, you know, an existing users can also do this for the most part. Um, there is an upgrade path, um, which, uh, which was, which I just, uh, I just demoed. Um, but uh, the, here's the caveat is that the, it, there's not 100% feature parity yet, specifically with image updates. So if you're a user that relies on image updates, it is a good way finished. It is in progress. Just hang tight, hang tight with Flux1 uh, if you need that. If you, um, if you're a new user and you absolutely know that you need that, then you, you may want to consider either postponing temporarily or starting with Flux1 because there is an upgrade path. Um, the, uh, the, and then otherwise, just go ahead and go to Flux2. One other caveat that's important, it's not really a caveat, it's more like, please, please join us in this journey. Um, if you have very complex charts that do very weird things that are, that are not recommended, uh, there might be use cases that this raises that we just don't have the ability to test yet and that the, the, um, the flux, various flux maintainers just haven't, haven't run across yet. There are a lot of people testing this, using it, but it's always possible that, you know, Helm allows you to do so many things. So uh, please, please, please test those if you have them in non-production and help us by posting issues. Let us know what you run into and we'll see what we can do together.